Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Dueck. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. David Liu. We're radiologists at UCLA, and we're members of the UCLA Endocrine Center. And today, we're gonna to talk to you about a procedure that we perform at UCLA called thyroid RFA, or thyroid radiofrequency ablation. And we thought the best way to handle this would be to answer 10 of the most popular questions about thyroid RFA. Uh, so let's get into it. So question number one, Dr. Liu, what is RFA? Thank you, Dr. Dueck. RFA stands for radio frequency ablation. What it is is a minimal invasive technique to dis destroy tissue, but through a very small needle electrode. You can see this is about the size of a regular intravenous needle. Through this needle, a generator generates an alternating electrical current, and at the very tip of it, it excites the molecules in the tissue pre and producing heating, and that's how the tissue is destroyed. So before we talk about how we can apply RFA in the thyroid gland, we have to understand a little bit about what a thyroid nodule is. So a thyroid nodule is a bump or a lump or a growth, these uh, terms are used interchangeably, that we can either see by ultrasound or we can feel by physical examination in the thyroid gland. Now these are extremely common. If you did an ultrasound on, of anyone on the street, you would find that up to 70% of women and 40% of men have sonographically ultrasound detected thyroid nodules. And the vast majority of these, 95% are benign, only a, a small percent are cancers. And the vast majority of those cause no problems whatsoever. They can be left alone entirely. Now there are some thyroid nodules that can produce too much thyroid hormone. Those are called hot thyroid nodules or functioning thyroid nodules. And sometimes nodules can grow to the size where they can produce symptoms just by their large size. Here's an example of a patient who has a large, uh, a large nodule in the thyroid gland. And this patient is having trouble swallowing, has a feeling of fullness in their neck, and obviously has uh, a cosmetic issue with the skin. So, Dr. Liu, what conditions can be treated with RFA? So, the case example Dr. Duak just showed is actually the exemplary type of um, condition where this technology can be used. Mostly benign, symptomatic nodules that cause problems. And the problems could be just size related, or the problem could be related to functioning um, hormone secretion through these nodules. And the idea here is just to destroy enough tissue so the size problem can be taken care of and destroy enough tissue such that the hormone secretion could be lessened to the point where it's no longer a problem. So these are for benign nodules. But there is now a um, possibility to treat small cancers. And um, this is something that uh, we're beginning to do, and there's uh, new data uh, in this front. But currently, the most common type of procedure is just the benign nodules that cause symptoms. Question number four, what about cystic thyroid nodules? Well, sometimes you might hear that a nodule is described as cystic, and what that means is that the nodule is fluid containing. The composition is predominantly fluid rather than solid. Now, these nodules can also be treated with minimally invasive techniques. Uh, we find, however, that injecting a little bit of alcohol that serves as a sclerosin to scar that uh, nodule is better in these cases of predominantly cystic thyroid nodules than is RFA. But that's a clinic, that's a procedure we also offer in our clinic. And Dr. Liu, what can I expect prior to the procedure? So we believe in formal consultations with the patients so we can sit down and explain the procedure itself. Of course, we'll be reviewing the laboratory results, any contraindications to the procedure, review any biopsy results so we can make sure these are not cancerous nodules for the benign tumors we want to treat. We also perform a planning ultrasound, which is very important in mapping out exactly how this could be done. We also encourage consultation with a UCLA endocrinologist or an end or endocrine surgeon if that has not already been done because we really believe in the multidisciplinary approach. I think every patient deserves to understand fully 
uh, all the options that are, that are possible uh, for their condition. What about the procedure itself? What can I expect from the procedure? Well, these are performed as an outpatient procedure. Um, patient walks in. We usually use local anesthetics only, although some patients may request uh, a mild sedative. Um, so we, we sometimes offer that as well. Usually the procedure lasts approximately one hour. If the nodules are small, it could be less than that. If the nodules are large, maybe a little bit more than that. We watch our needle tip with ultrasound guidance at all time, and the patients get out of there just with a, a small Band-Aid at the skin. So here's a schematic of the procedure. Here on the screen left, we see uh, that small needle electrode, which is burning small spheres of overlapping tissue, and we move that needle until the entire nodule is completely treated. On the screen right, this is what we're looking at uh, during the procedure. So this is an ultrasound image, and here's our needle, and we can see this echogenic response, this brightness at the needle tip as the, tumor, as the lesion is ablated that shows that the treatment has been adequate, and then we can move the uh, needle electrode to the next spot. So Dr. Liu, what about after the procedure? What can I expect? So first of all, immediately after the procedure, um, there might be very, very minor discomfort, but most patients have no limitations to activities whatsoever. And in terms of the size of the nodule, it will gradually shrink. And usually, about approximately a m in a month, it, will, it might have already shrunken by 20, 30%. And people actually start feeling different. Um, and the larger nodules will take a little more time. This is actually a schematic graph of the, of the volume reduction over time. As you can see, there's a pretty steep drop within the first few months. And by approximately six months, there's actually a, approximately 70 to 80% already reduction in size, uh, volume of the tumor. And this is accompanied by what people would rate as their cosmetic score, in other words, how they feel about their neck, and, uh, and of course, any symptoms. And these symptoms typically just completely go away. So yeah, here is an example of a patient before and after the ablation. This happens to be a very large nodule. And, and after about six months, this is the level at which it will look. Question number eight, will I have to take thyroid medication after RFA? Well, this is one of the main advantages of radiofrequency ablation is that we only target abnormal tissue. It does not affect the background uh, thyroid uh, gland itself. And so, so the, the simple answer to that question is no. You will not have to take supplemental thyroid medication after the RFA. We note here that some patients have pre-existing thyroid conditions, such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where those patients already have a thyroid that's not working uh, to full capacity. And so those patients, just as part of the natural disease process, sometimes have to go on to take thyroid medication, but that's not a result of the procedure itself. And question nine, what about hot thyroid nodules? So the hot thyroid nodule is a, th is a nodule that produces extra hormone and uh, that can cause you know, uh, symptoms. So in this, in this type of situation, traditionally it's surgery or radioiodine therapy to destroy those nodules, but RFA has been shown that it can be effective in decreasing the hormone secretion such that the patient can have basically what we call a euthyroid state, meaning there's no excess hormone secretion. And this can be successful in up to 80% of patients with small nodules, and for larger lesions, up to 50% uh, success. And a related topic, what about uh, cancerous nodules? Uh, this is something that we're only beginning to explore. Um, this particular patient, for example, has a small cancerous nodule in the thyroid, and this patient's not eligible for surgery for, because of medical conditions. So we were able to ablate this nodule the same way we would, we would ablate a benign nodule, and this is a year later. The, the nodule literally completely disappeared from the thyroid. And there's some early data showing that this could be a way to treat very small cancerous nodules in the thyroid but it is something that's uh, certainly have to be done after a full discussion uh, with the surgeon, and with, your, with the patient, and um, before we can do something like this. 
And our, our final question, question number 10, which is actually three questions, but we thought top 10 questions sounded better than top 12 questions, but, um, but very briefly, is RFA safe? Uh, question number one. So th the answer is yes. RFA is shown to have a very favorable risk profile. Every procedure comes with some small risk, but RFA has been shown to have very small risk, very low risk, and every potential risk is discussed at length with the patient during their clinic visit. Another question that comes up quite, quite commonly, will it leave a scar? The answer is no. The puncture site closes quickly within days after the procedure and it leaves no scar. And finally, perhaps the hardest uh, question of this entire presentation, will my insurer pay for this? And the answer more and more frequently is yes, we've had good success, especially in the last year or two, at getting insurers to pay for this procedure as they recognize its efficacy and its safety. Uh, but that said, our team works with every patient's insurer to make sure that this is covered prior to scheduling the procedure. So in conclusion, thyroid RFA is a minimally invasive alternative to treat certain thyroid conditions. It's proven to be effective and safe. It leaves no scar and does not affect thyroid function. Uh, for any patients interested, this is the contact information for our clinic, and we thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.